bike, the last little spin on the TT bike ahead of next weekend. Um, I started vlogging the other day and haven't sit, picked up the camera since, so I'm going to restart this. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to do an hour and a half, hour and 45, um, and then I'm going to talk you through some tips on tapering. So that's what I'm going to do today as I go about my day getting ready for next weekend. So enjoy the vlog. Right done, 55k done, just under two hours, which is bang on um, this weekend. Training wise, there's only an hour's run and a two hour bike. So both of those ticked off, which is perfect. And I guess that leads me on to tip number one of tapering, which is obviously reducing your training volume. Now, this will often, here you go clicking the sweat off my legs. This will often feel a bit weird because you are so used to doing so much. You know, I've been doing like 15 to 20 hours of training a week for months and um, so it often can feel a little bit weird but your body needs it your body needs time to rest to recover and to allow your body to be in the best physical state that it can be leading into the race um, what we want to avoid is training right up into the race and then finally we're going to the race feeling fatigued now often people can get a bit stressed about tapering thinking that you know it's going to undo all the work that i've been doing you know it's lazy like um i'm gonna become unfitter if i'm not trained for two weeks leading into the race and it's the complete opposite if we allow all the fatigue to drop off your body you'll actually feel fitter and obviously more energized going into the race that goes without saying we want to still keep the body moving we don't want to completely cease all exercise because you'll find you stiffen up you probably won't feel your best we want to move the body without adding any additional or new fatigue i mean if i compare this week i've just done about six to seven hours of training across this entire week whereas obviously as i said the previous week's been 15 to 20 hours so it can feel a bit weird because often people think you know my fitness will drop off a cliff it's the complete opposite you'll find that your fatigue drops at a much quicker rate than your fitness does so while we may see an ever so slight plateau or ever, ever so slight dip in your fitness that will be offset by you recovering and how fresh you'll feel going into the race super important that we pull down training and fight our mind that's telling us maybe we're being lazy or we should still be training if you've done the work if you've done all your training sessions you've hit all of those then you need to trust in that you need to trust in the fact that you have done the work and the fitness is there and you now need to rest and recover because when we rest and recover that's when our body adapts and becomes fitter so rest and recover um, and as I said I'll be slicking down your volume of training hello you two Hazy you Moo, say hi to the vlogs say hi to the vlog hero <laughs> I start walking the dogs and I thought it would be a good time to do tip number two for taper and that is to reflect. So often we get so caught up in race day, race day, like if I achieve like this time on race day I'll be happy if I do this, I'll be unhappy if I don't hit this time and I just think it's really important to reflect just on like how far you've already come. Like I always say to any of the athletes I work with, like the race day is kind of like the cherry on top of the cake. I think so often people think the hardest part of an Ironman is the Ironman itself. Now obviously don't get me wrong, an Ironman itself is obviously extremely physically and mentally demanding, but what's arguably harder is showing up for the past, I don't know, six months, eight months, 12 months, being consistent with your training, showing up when you didn't want to show up, showing up when it was the middle of winter and it was raining, snowing outside and you had to go out for that run or getting up at 5 a.m. when it was pitch black and getting on your turbo for two hours. You know, overcoming all of that, I think it's really important to reflect on, on just how far you've come, probably how much you have grown as a person, how disciplined you've been. I think that's so important because you need to give yourself credit for that, not just the end result of, will I get sub 12, sub 13, sub 10? Like, yes, that's nice, but you can't pin all of your happiness and all of your worth from this whole Ironman journey based solely on the time that you cross that finish line. So reflecting on what you've achieved over the past however long this this journey has been going on and what it really means to you and um, because that ultimately is the most important thing so i'm going to just take some time one second come on this way darling come on so taking time whether that's on a a walk or just like reflecting with someone else who's been on this journey with you and just yeah come and think because it's 
pretty cool how far you already come. So I'm just going to start getting some bits together, getting stuff ready to pack. Um, we fly on Thursday morning, so I just want to make sure things are getting organised. Actually, I thought whilst I was doing that, I'd show you my new tri suit because I decided to treat myself to a new tri suit for this race. What I was racing in before it was the Trimtex one. I don't know what the name was. Anyway, it was Trimtex. Absolutely love it. But I wanted to try a tri fit one i really like the designs of the tri-fit ones and i've heard good things about them so i thought i'd give them a go and see how i get on with it probably not the best thing to do in race nine running a brand new tri suit but i've done it before and like i'm sure it'd be fine famous last words <laughs> um but anyway i bought this one i love the pattern on it let me just lie it down here and you can see it let me turn this round here it is. So, move this out of the way. So here it is, my tri suit that I'll be racing in for this year's Ironman. I also treated myself to a new pair of Oakley sunglasses and they are white framed, so I feel like it'll go nicely with them. And I feel like just if you feel nice in your outfit, like you'll race well, fingers crossed, but it's always nice to feel nice. Brand new tri suit, so as I said, I'm just gonna start getting everything out, and I guess that kind of leads me onto my third point of like taper tips, is get organized. Like it's, it's simple, it's obvious, but get, like lay everything out, write lists, that's what I'm just about to go do now, I'm gonna go read through the race, um, athlete guide and just like check where even though I've done it before kind of got an idea in my head about like aid station things it's still important to read through it obviously things change with the course from year to year so you don't want to go in being like I know everything and then actually they've changed everything so it's still important to read the athlete guide and um, anything that may have changed and I'm going to like I did last year just write out sort of what nutrition I'm going to have on the bike, what, like, which aid station I'll stop at, which one I'll need to throw a bottle and get a new one, all that sort of thing. And then I'm going to start, yeah, putting things into piles and just laying everything out. So I'll do, like, a swim, a bike, a run pile um, and just start getting all packed. So that is on the agenda for this afternoon. I've got, like, the full day to just chill. I've biked this morning. I've walked the dogs. I'm watching Netflix, I've got nothing else to do, so I'm just gonna get organised because you don't ever regret being organised. So, yes, that would be taper tip number three. Also something else, very exciting, some of the girls, but my period just came, which means, well, I'm, I don't wanna jinx it, I think it has just come, you know, when you're like, I don't know, maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Um, and yeah, obviously it's Sunday today, racing next Sunday, which means hopefully, it should have gone. So, yeah, I don't want to jinx it, but yay. So I'm just going through the athlete guide, looking at all the timings as well. So like when I'm going to register, we arrive on the Thursday, I'm going to register on the Friday and then it's bike drop and bag drop on the Saturday. So I'd rather register if I can, if I'm there in time, I would prefer to register the day before and then come home, stickers on the bike, pack bags, etc., And then the next day go down and drop everything off. Sometimes that's not possible. Like if you arrive a bit closer to the race, you have to do it all in one day, which is fine. Oh, I'm nervous. We start at seven on the Sunday. Uh, oh, it's all very real. Awards and Ironman World Champ slot allocation on the Monday, 10 to 11.30. We can hope. <laughs> <sighs> I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm nervous. But I think I'm more excited than I am nervous, but... I just can't believe it's come around so soon. So I've pretty much planned everything. I know which aid stations I'm gonna swap bottles at. Um, I usually, I can picture the 100K aid stations at the top of a hill. Um, that's where I had to stop and pump up my tire last year. But what I'm gonna do there is pull over quickly, take all my bottles off, put new ones on, have a banana, and then maybe grab some of the solids to replace the solids I would have eaten. But yeah, that's, I've kind of got a bit of a, a plan. Obviously you want to fuel while on the bike. You don't want to underfuel, but you usually don't want to overfuel because then that can impact you on the run. So whilst you can, and I think this is another thing to take into consideration, whilst you can have the perfect plan that you may have trained 
on your um, in your in your all your training sessions on your long rides. You could write down the perfect plan. You could say I'm going to stop at this aid station, stop at this aid station. It might not happen that way. I think that's really important as well. You might have a, an upset stomach on race morning, and you might not be really able to stomach your nutrition, and that's one of those things that you have to adapt. Or you might get to the the aid station and then not be able to grab a bottle and missed one so you might have to wait till the next one like these sorts of things whilst you can plan it's important to you know I have an awareness now that the aid stations are like 33k 66 100k 133 164k like I know when they, where they all are a bit of an idea of what's going on I feel a bit more on top of things now which I think is just the most important thing you just feel prepared have a bit of a plan in place and whilst you've got a plan in place also accept that you know not everything goes to plan race day that's cool it's part of the like you know it's a however many hour an all day race there's bound to be things that may not go quite to plan and you have to adapt and that's that's the beauty of it so anyway that is that done so taper tip number four i think we're on is eat <laughs> i think this is something that you know you get really good at when you're training and you're fueling after each session but then often when you cut down on your training you might not think your nutrition is as important whereas in actual fact it's even more important at this time because not only are you fueling your body just for day to day your food your body sorry needs calories to function but it also needs protein and carbs to repair from all the training that it has done and if you think about it I know that like the race may be a week or two ahead like you're fueling ahead for that I think that's where a lot of people go wrong when it comes to race day fueling is they think oh I just need to eat a load the day before and then I'm fueled up ready for the race when actually we need to keep fueling especially in the week leading up to the race especially with an Ironman it's so important so let me just set you down it's really important that we continue fueling and also your body right now after a few big months, big weeks of training is probably in its most compromised state in that your immune system has taken a battering, obviously trying to recover from all these huge sessions that you've probably been doing. So when your body is in this compromised state, you're more susceptible to picking up illnesses. And the last thing you wanna do in the weeks leading up to your race is pick up an illness. So um, yeah, calories are important, obviously, yeah, and your essential macronutrients, so your protein, your fats, your carbs are important, but then just general nutrients. So thinking of the nutrient quality going into each of your meals. So, I mean, this is something I do day to day, but just making sure all of your meals are filled with color. Um, you've got protein with each meal. You've got a carbohydrate source with each meal. You're getting your fats in. Just, yeah, make sure you're fueling. For me, I don't know if anyone's like me, but last week's so the first week of my taper, I was super, super hungry. And I guess you're so used to eating such a high volume of food and um, higher amount of calories off the back of all the big sessions you've probably been doing. So my hunger was really high last week, whereas it started to settle sort of the back end of the week going into into the week leading up to, my, up to my race. It has settled a little bit, which is nice. But yeah, just making sure that you're fueling sufficiently to get you fueled for your race coming up and just to, you know, try and minimize any risk of any illnesses or anything. So I have got a big bowl of pasta here. Pasta, chicken sausages. I'm gonna add some cheese to it. I'm gonna microwave some veg as well. I literally made this on Friday. I just made a huge batch of it and had it for tea Friday, Saturday, and it's now Sunday and I'm having it for tea because I'm basic like that and I am lazy when it comes to my food. And I know this will fuel me. I know it tastes nice and I can't really cook anything else. So I'm gonna microwave that, get some cheese on it, get some veg, in short, even though you're not doing as much training, you still need to fuel your body, so eat up. You literally can't go wrong with pasta. You cannot go wrong. Oh, actually, while I'm here, <laughs> I've just thought of another taper tip. This wasn't on my notes, but I'm gonna say it. Um, so, bonus point is, don't stress if you start to like feel any aches and pains that you've never felt before don't stress if like you wake up in on the first day of your two-week taper and you've got a bit of like a sore throat or yeah if you start to at the moment i've got this weird 
shooting pain in like the arch of my foot and I remember last year going into my Ironman I had this weird like shin like again shooting pain up my shin um this is so normal I think it's a, a combination of like allowing your body to to rest and maybe there are a few little niggles and aches and pains there which is you know, is what it is, that's part of endurance training. Um, am I even in focus? I think it's sometimes a bit of a psychological thing as well. I think that, like, with so, you, you become, because you've got such a big race coming up, you are so, so hyper aware of everything. You might not have been aware of this shooting pain in your foot six weeks ago when you were just chilling, but because you've got this awareness of, I can't be ill, I can't be injured, I need to go into this race feeling my best. It's such this big thing that you're so hyper aware of every single thing. So like, if you feel a bit niggly, if you feel a bit achy, if you feel like, oh, I've got, have I got a bit of a sore throat? You don't have a sore throat, you're not injured. It's just part of like the, t the taper process. <laughs> treatments so we had to do things slow and then just before i go to bed the final taper tip that i will share is use the week ahead of your race to really catch up on sleep because i guarantee you you will not sleep very much the night before your race and definitely not the night after your race like the adrenaline after your race is unreal um and I can't remember the last time I slept after a race. Um, I just, I never sleep after races with all the adrenaline and all the caffeine and all the gels and all the carbs and everything. Like, oh, I just, <laughs> yeah, just so much adrenaline. And then obviously the night before, I mean, well, touch wood, um, in previous races, I've not slept too awfully the night before. I always try and get to bed super early. I have my evening meal sort of a couple of hours earlier because I know my whole day the next day is going to be shifted slightly earlier. So I want to be able to get up, go to the loo, etc. You're probably only going to get, let's be honest, like five hours sleep the night before your race. The night after, let's say two. So you're going to be sleep deprived. So as much as possible, just bank as much sleep as you can um, because, yeah, you won't be sleeping. Um, the night before your race and don't let that stress you either i think that's something that everyone gets stressed about like oh my god what if i don't sleep the night before my race you probably won't so accept it and just know that you'll be running off adrenaline anyway you'll be running off adrenaline anyway um during your race so don't let the fact that you know you only got four hours sleep when you usually get eight hours sleep don't let that get in your head because there's no point in stressing about that catch your money sleep bank a load of sleep the week before and you'll be absolutely fine so I think that rounds up my taper tips. Hope this was useful. If it was, then make sure to give this video a like. Drop me a comment on yeah, if you enjoyed and let me know what your next race is. Really interested to, to know. I love chatting to you all in the comments. I'm going to get to bed. It's Monday tomorrow. We fly on Thursday, I race on Sunday. <laughs> Exciting times. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you very soon.